The Scottish Highlands are renowned for their wild beauty, grandeur and rich cultural heritage. And nowhere more apparent than in Dornoch, with a varied and interesting history dating as far back as the 8th century. The name Dornoch is derived from the Gaelic for pebbly place and is a town and seaside resort, parish and formal royal borough in the county of Sutherland on the east coast of Scotland. It lies on the north shore of the Dornoch Firth and is a place not to be missed. Well good morning everybody, I'm Lloydie and Phoebe and welcome to Dornoch. We're going to be spending the winter showing you all the amazing things there is to do here in Dornoch in the Scottish Highlands from food to whiskey to golf to outdoor activities and everything in between. Let's buckle up, you're in for one big Scottish adventure. Our first adventure begins with Connell Outdoor Pursuits where we journey out of the town to the Highland Shooting Centre to take part in their shoot and scoop package of archery and clay pigeon shooting. But on the way we had to stop at the Falls of Shin, an incredible waterfall and area of natural beauty on the River Shin, and it's the perfect place to spot salmon leaping upstream. Grab the arrow from just under the arrow flints here. So mm -hmm. these are just for a reminder. And if you hold the bow like this sideways, pointing up towards the sky, you want to keep this odd colour out upwards mm -hmm. on the arrow flints. Put it onto the white plastic guide here, and then bring it back on to the string until you hear a click. And you'll see there, there's two copper pieces on the string there called knocking points, and that's where it clicks onto. Up. Now watch my right elbow. Keep the elbow up. Okay, I'm a little high because I'm still wearing my hat just now. But if you keep the elbow up, that's actually the main thing to worry about when you're doing this. And it'll give you consistent release and hopefully it'll be accurate every time. Just bring it up to the same place where you bring, say, a knuckle in, the thumb, up to the eyeball. And use that as your same reference point. Stop the string on your face okay. every time. Get the same power. Keep the elbow up. You're doing the same thing every time. Just make sure you're standing side on like this. Feet straight, hips straight, back straight. And as long as you're not arching around like this, and you're doing more like this, it'll be all fine. Okay. Damn! <laughs> I hit the paper, just not the paper I wanted to hit. So we're aiming for inside the red circle, way out there on the white. But I think for our first shot, that wasn't too bad. At least okay. I actually got it off. Your arm and posture up, don't let go. Once you've let go of the wind, don't relax once you've let go of the string. Good, a lot better that time actually. So Dang. continue to aim, <laughs> looking down the line of the arrow, like grip, keep the elbow up, and I'll be signing like Captain Kirk. More power, more power, more power. That's it. Look down the line of the arrow, just let it go. A little bit higher. Whoa. Okay. So all we're going to do today is do a yep. five shot target group. Okay. Um, and We'll see how you get on and we'll try and refine what you've learned in the past. Not overly optimistic, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> but, and hopefully we'll put a nice group in, as I was saying earlier, uh, you know, a good five shots group within the red circle there. That's a good target to reach. Okay, um, so we're 10 metres out, five shots each. Fiona versus Lloyd. Yeah. <laughs> money's on me. <laughs> My money's on you too. Pressure's on. <laughs> Pressure's on. <laughs> For well, the Highland Shooting Centre I offer a whole range of outdoor pursuits from stag hunts to long range shooting 
But today we are on their scoot and shoot package, getting in a little bit of archery ready for some clay shooting. Now I'm a little bit of a dab hand when it comes to archery, managed to get some pretty decent shots in there. So let's see how we are with the shotgun. You don't really have to aim it, just see the target and move your hands up to the target and pull the trigger. Look at anything, don't look at that stick, the bar, anything. Look at nothing. <laughs> You've got kind of three main types of clay shooting. Um, you've got skeet shooting, which is a discipline, comes off two towers and a cross, mm -hmm. so it's a crossing target. We've then got sporting clays, which you've shot before, which are variable angles. You know, you can have rabbits, you can have batus, midis, yes. every angle to sort of simulate sporting bird, you know, and, and wildlife, you know, for hunters. And then trap shooting, what you see at the, the Olympics. Uh, in the Commonwealth Games you generally see skeet and trap uh, because the targets are consistently the same. So the skill in trap shooting is consistency. So it's a high, you get a lot of scores, high score, but uh, it's about being consistent at it. Sporting clay is a bit, I'd say it's harder, but you, it's more forgiving. You can drop a few targets and still not go home. Yeah. In this game, if you want to be really good, if you drop one, it's... You're done. It's Done. like, that's me lost today, which yeah. is a bit devastating. And you should be looking down the line and flat the barrel. The beads will kind of line up. Don't concentrate on aiming through the beads, but just make sure you're flat in line looking down the barrel, not over it, not under it, into it, okay? And whenever you start aiming down low, keep your cheek on the gun. That's it, when you say pull, just follow up. Okay? Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Okay, when you're ready, so lift the gun up first. Bring it into position, put it onto the shoulder, that's great, it's not hurting you. Finger away from the trigger until you're ready. Good, good. Okay. Pull. Okay, left again, that's all. Pull. Okay, so you just need to follow it. Okay. And you just seen it when it came up, and you just pull the trigger and you just stop moving the barrel. Okay. Pull your left Yeah, you lifted your head as soon as you seen the clay. Instead of following the clay with the gun, you went, ah! <laughs> it's like a gawking bird, you know, when you see them. Everyone does that from time to time, so don't worry. Okay, you start the way you pack and it start as that far. That. I wouldn't use that one at all. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I feel like every bit of that one. Sure. <laughs> I am so sorry for this something. Well, Highland pursuits are a huge part of the way of life here in Scotland, and in Doorknock they hold no exception. That was some awesome, great fun. It turns out I'm quite a dab shot. <laughs> you are a good shot. Me, on the other hand, a little bit iffy, but with their help and guidance, I kind of got there in the end. But from outdoors, to indoors, we are ready for some food. And Dornoch is famed for its good places to eat. And we're definitely gonna be sampling some of those on our winter tour here. And our first stop is the courtroom, the old former courthouse here in Dornoch, built by Thomas Brown in 1849. It was the hub and meeting place, and of course the court of the town for a long time. And now it's a beautiful building used for food, music, for whiskey, for shopping, and also, for a luxury spa. But it's Sunday and we have heard that the Sunday roast is absolutely amazing in the courtroom. So we're gonna go in, get some lunch, see what it's like.
Well, the perfect way to walk off a beautiful lunch is to explore some of Dornock scenery, famous for its blue flag beaches, but also for its woodlands. And we've come up here to Camorra Woods to meet with Anne, who's from Dornock Heritage. And she's gonna take us for a walk around the woods. Now it's free to come up and walk around and you can have an explore, walk your dogs, come and see the sights. But Anne is gonna actually teach us a little bit today about its history, because the woods behind us hold 25 ancient hut dwellings that are two to 3,000 years old and she's going to tell us a little bit more about them. What you've got here is a kind of mini ridge mm -hmm. in front of us and the middle one mm -hmm. is the change of care. Vikings yeah. were here? Yeah. May have been robbed by the Vikings because in those days it probably would have got to be bare stone. Because of the forestry it's got very vegetated. Okay. Even since I first came to see it, what? Well, so is it covered ago. over with, with grass and stuff? Grass now. and, and yes. blaybury and everything. Yeah. The, the wee bit of fern there? Yes. And then it comes up past the the gorse yep. and as it dips away that's the end of it. As far as I know because in case I should get one set of 40 meters long yes. of stones but this one I think is a fair long. So it's about 20 meters round. And it dates back to? Back to Neolithic which is 45,000 years. Possibly wow. not as far back as 5,000, certainly wow. 4,000. Here, you would have had a fairly open aspect out to the sea. So, yes. if you, um, we don't know where the Neolithic people lived. Yes. We don't find their houses very often. Mm -hmm. But if you go to the um, hut surface here, yes. that's their houses. So, we know where the Mesolithic people they were on the shore because mm -hmm. we've got a, a, a Mesolithic midden. We know we've got Neolithic because we've got their burial. Yes. But the Bronze Age and the Iron Age are the best represented. Yeah. And they're represented very well in this yeah. woodland. Wow. Scotland really is beautiful in the winter. Well, although the hot circles were covered in bracken, you could still make out the remnants of these awesome ancient dwellings here in the Cornwall Woods. It was a really interesting walk and a beautiful place to come, just the family to the play park with the dogs, a lovely place to explore, the perfect winter's walk. But after all that outdoor activity today, we are ready for some food and to tuck down into our accommodation. Tonight we're staying at the Everlix self-catering pods. We're gonna pick ourselves up, cheeky little takeaway, and head there for the night. Let's go. Our accommodation for tonight is just outside Dornock in the Evelix pods. These absolutely gorgeous little wooden huts with shingled roofs and wooden decks. They're so, so sweet. There's a few of them here on the site just outside Dornock. And we're gonna go in and have a little look. So they've left us a key in a lockbox and emailed us a code beforehand just for safe security. And this is our little housey for tonight. I mean, how sweet is this? It's absolutely beautiful. We've got a lovely double bed here tucked into the back. There's a little kitchenette. It's just got a kettle toaster, a microwave and a fridge, but it's perfect just for a couple of nights stay. It's all you would need. And it has got an ensuite shower room. They are sparkling and new and it looks so nice. It's actually lovely to have a, an ensuite shower room in these because often they're on a block outside. So that is really nice. And we have got a double sofa, a little table and chairs, and a TV. And it's really snug and cosy in here. So I think we're going to maybe have our takeaway dinner and just settle in for the night. Well, it's been one awesome day here at Thornlock. We've been shooting, we've been on one awesome history walk. We've listened to live music and had a few more drams. Now as we are staying in a self-catering unit here in the Everlix Pods, 
It can only call for one thing. And Highland Spice here in Doorknock, the Indian takeaway. The only one I've hooked us right up. Come on. <laughs> so nice to come in after a busy day of activities and such a cute cozy little place to stay and have a nice dinner and just chill out for the evening ready for more adventures tomorrow see you later <laughs> So today was a pretty amazing first day in Dornock, but we're pretty tired out. And our little glamping pod is absolutely adorable and it's so cosy and snug, so we're ready for a good night's sleep and some more adventures tomorrow. Yeah, today was, was an epic mix of like fun filled adventures, mixed off with some food, mm. mixed off with some drink, and finding that kind of, that trad music in the in the courtroom tonight. It yeah, incredible. it was such a good recommendation by the staff in the courtroom to come back for the music tonight. It was a really nice find and a lovely way to just to wind down the end of a busy day. It was really good. It was perfect. Yeah. Chopped. Yeah. Guys, as always, none of these videos would be possible without your support. So please leave your comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Guys. We came here to explore Dornock, and this, this is, is what, what we saw. <laughs> so today was... <laughs> What's wrong, Bernanke? <laughs> well, I need you to help me out here with something as a true Scottish woman. Yeah. As an English man and often other nations, we find ourselves mispronouncing a lot of the Scottish words, unable to do so myself. And I often pronounce the words like lock and knock wrong. We are here in Doorknock, as I've been calling it all weekend, quite badly as an Englishman because I cannot pronounce that. <laughs> Doorknock. Lock. What is that? So it's like a sound. So, Dornoch. It's like my maiden name, it's got a sound in it. Mm. So, Dornoch. Dornoch. Not quite as exaggerated as that, but yeah, Dornoch. Dornoch. Loch. Loch. Close? It's alright. <laughs>